Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Crash Bandicoot Remake Commentary. And, um, yeah, we're back in the generator room because I died at the end of last part. I left that outtake in because I thought that death was hilarious. And, um, I was slightly, like, majorly sleep-baked when I was editing it. Hence all the sound of silence that you were hearing last part. <laughs> no, you're just a really big fan of Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah, all... 20 seconds of it that I've heard through meme humor. Uh, no, you've definitely heard Simon and Garfunkel on, like, the... on the radio or whatever. No, I haven't, actually. Um, oh, well, then you've never listened to the radio, then. Okay, good to know. I I've listened to the radio in the car, but, like, it's my mom and dad's car, and they have... Um, Oops, why are you leaving I that? almost forgot the box. How did you... But that's, like, so... What? That's so blatant, even for you. Like I said, <laughs> it was late. <laughs> when I was recording this level. It was even later when I edited it, but it was late when I was recording this level and I started making some amateur mistakes out of exhaustion. It took me, like, did you see me standing there? And I'm like, I, I just stopped and I'm like, wait, I'm forgetting something. And I was thinking, wait, am, I, am I what dreaming? am I forgetting? And the box is, is this like, real life? The box is fully <laughs> visible. And it took me like three seconds to notice it. That's how autopilot my gameplay was at this point. This is when the LSD kicked in. If you pay attention real closely to my minute movements. Uh, um, word of advice. Don't try to walk into the bonus level teleporters. You will fall off. Yeah. I made that mistake while recording a certain level. You won't see it, I don't think, because I think it was in an out an outtake that I that I nixed out to save on recording space. But ugh. oh no, wait, we'll see it. It was in the high road or at the road of nowhere, I think. Yeah, it was the road of nowhere. Second visit. Oof. You have to visit that level twice. Yeah, it's got to. Yeah, because you have to get the gem. It's got the red gem path in it. Two red gem paths, actually. But you only have one red gem. Uh, anyway, Generator Room makes me nervous, which is strange because I don't really have that much trouble actually doing the platforming challenges. Uh, it's only because it's a color gem, I think. There's just something about the awkward platform movements that makes me nervous. Well, in a way, I, I brought this up a couple of times previously, but it, I like to look at Generator Room as a converted temple level. Yeah, it, it's not... The t it's not the temple level like parts that get me though. It's stuff like the sliding underneath the heat pipes. <laughs> um, oh well, yeah, that part. Always and sucks. this, which is easy, that sort of makes your palms a bit sweaty. Uh, knees heavy, arms spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, arms spaghetti. I don't think I've ever botched the timing on spinning a box between two TNT crates since I was actually a kid. Uh, well, it's funny because in the original game, I used to. I got them on the way the down. Yeah, I got them on the way down in the insane trilogy. I can now get them on the way up easily. Yeah. Well, I still get them on the way down. It's still easier that way. This part, in all of the levels, it appears this kind of sliding or under the the pipe part, always makes me nervous. But I don't think I ever remember screwing it up. Even when I sucked at video games, it's odd. And yeah, Pinstripe is apparently the CEO of Cortex's personal power company. I mean, I don't know who he's selling power to. Cortex rules the island, but <laughs> he uh, the has village a fancy people. business title. Oh, he's selling windmill power to them. Ah, where else? Oh, are pretty they sure gonna the get it? pretty sure the village people have their own people who do generators for their tours. Eh. Well, anyway, we have the orange gem now, not to be confused with the yellow gem, and, well, the coloring kind of does make it hard to tell which is which, to be honest. But, uh, we could go deal with toxic waste, but I don't like toxic waste. It's my least favorite level in well, the game. Well, nobody does. I mean... I mean, toxic waste tends to kill you, so... No, it, it was my least favorite level in the original because it was one of the most bullshit hard levels, and in the remake, it's one of my least favorite because it's the most bullshit easy. Um... <laughs> so, I can't win with that level. But, uh, since we have the orange gem, we can actually go back all the way to the first island. Do they have any sort of fast travel option to make it easier? No. Uh, they wonderful. did add a warp point next to, um... 
Insanity Beats, but only if you get the Stormy Ascent DLC. Yeah, the, the, the Stormy Ascent DLC has a shortcut to Insanity Beach right next to the Cortex boss. So um, you can fast travel from Island 3 to Island 1 that way. It's fairly convenient. Anyway, we have to do upstream now. Again, I don't like the gem pads in this level. They are awkward. Some of the most awkward in the entire game, I would say. Well, yeah. I mean, you have the, the gem platforms underneath the goddamn waterfall, which is a really awkward jump to time and judge um, for one box. And then you have an extended pathway after the, after the, the goal, but it's not a particularly challenging, interesting stretch of level, and all you get is, like, two boxes. They were made... They were made easier in this game versus the original because um, one detail that I kind of miss and don't miss for different reasons is that the gem platforms in the original game took the shape of the gem that you got. Yeah. Uh, in this game, they went the Crash 2 and 3 route where they're just all the same platform, just a different color. They probably didn't want to uh, program out differently shaped hitboxes for all of them because you know they would have done that. Oh, well, I suppose so, but... Uh, so visually, it's not as interesting, but gameplay-wise, it's easier to deal with. Can I just say something that seriously, severely creeped me out? Uh, did you see how close I came to missing that? Jesus fucking Christ. But um, one of the things that creeps me out about the river levels in particular is that, you know the red uh, Venus flytrap plants? Um, yeah. In the original, they would they would start shaking and snap after you landed on them. In this game, they start quivering, like, uh, an instant before you land on them. Yeah. Like, right bef right there, you see? I hadn't quite touched it yet, but it started, it started like it was about to close. It's like, it doesn't make it any harder, but it's psychological warfare, man. <laughs> <laughs> We're all just puppets, man, just jumping in the Venus flytraps and spending our parents' money and... Uh. Tetris. I like how, just to make Tana's design more interesting, they gave her a crash shirt. So you know, some girls, um, they, they they like get 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 your name tattooed on them to show their uh, everlasting dedication. Tana. And then you have Tana. She she made sure it was temporary. She just, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. threw your face yeah, okay. on her. Shirt. There you go. That's where the intelligence comes from. It's not because of like you know, punching out a mook. It's because no, she got a shirt of Crash instead of a tattoo of Crash. <laughs> No, Ta Crash got a tattoo of Tana, and that's why we got Crash of the Giants. Crash of the Titans. <laughs> Tana's name is a tribal tattoo? That's I guess so. Terrifying. <laughs> what kind of. How would you get a. Qu question. How would you get a tattoo of Tattoo Crash? Uh. <laughs> Just took the hit there, I guess. Yeah, I realized as I was jumping that that wasn't going to work, but I had masks, so fuck it. But then I realized after I made that jump, I was like, wait. I didn't actually remember whether the mask would protect me from that. Well, it's a good thing it did. Yep, unless it's a bottomless pit or getting crushed. Aku will take the hit for you, you monster. Protect me, mask. In the Crash manga, by the way, Aku Aku actually can save Crash from pits. He fly, When Crash falls into a pit, he flies down and pulls him out. Oh, so we can do that in, you know, in print, but not in the actual game. I see how it is. Cutscene power to the max. <laughs> All right, and now it's time to actually take care of toxic waste. I hate this level. I hate it so much. It's so blah. And it's a gem stage, so you have to do it without dying. But that's not nearly the headache it was in the original game, because, like I say. They marked the floor where the bouncing barrels land. So you can just time it so that you're never on those spaces when the barrel bounces. And the barrel yeah. has a pretty generous arc on its bounces. It, like, you can get pretty close without it hitting you. Not to mention, you can also just rub against the side of the uh, barrels and it won't count. I've had that happen to me a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, my first playthrough. The barrel needs to be pretty much on top of the character to hurt. Yeah. This is also another very easy stage to do if you come in with two mass. 
Yeah, because you can just essentially just... You should never get hit by the rolling barrels. Yeah, that that's just straight up Donkey Kong platforming. Yeah, you jump a couple times and you're good. Uh, the only times it gets slightly trickier are when you have to jump onto a narrow platform and avoid the barrels at the same time. That's the same kind of precision timing platforming challenge that levels like Slippery Climb like to pull on you. But It's also essential if you want to get the relic. Well, yeah. Gold or platinum, I should stress. Uh, it's one of my favorite musical tracks in the game, too. I love Toxic Waste's theme. Yeah. It sounds more like a boss theme. Yeah, and in a way, it is kind of a sub-boss sort of thing. You're dealing with Pinstripe's minions here. I like that Pinstripe has minions. Like, <laughs> he's, like these, these are the only levels in the game where you get the... You get the potteroos with the handguns, or the fat potteroos that throw barrels at you. When I think about it, there are only... Let me see. Three bosses in this entire game that have minions of a sort that you deal with on the way to the boss. Because Papu Papu had the native tribesman, which is, goes without saying. Uh, Pinstripe has his goons. And obviously Cortex and Brio has the scientists that throw, you know, beakers at you and all that. But you never fight any, like, Ripper Roo minions or Koala Kong minions or... Uh, I guess that's it, isn't it? Yeah, you're right. Uh -huh. I mean, mm, I can I can understand why Ripper Roo wouldn't have minions. He doesn't exactly seem like the leader type. But Koala Kong, surprised there wasn't anything that matched him. It's a, you know, it's, it's, it's stuff that I notice as I go through this game, uh, that I, I like to think about those kind of details in Crash 1 in particular, because again, the, the, um, the levels have, the, the, the level progression has a sort of storytelling continuity to it that I kind of like. I like, like how you just stare at Tana being dragged away every single time. <laughs> <laughs> there she goes again. I'm not even Should I do anymore. something? Oh, I should God. do something. What happened to Crash's eyes there? Lighting in this area is weird. Lighting in the area is pretty weird for a couple of places throughout the entire trilogy. And it's always on Crash's eyes, I notice. I guess that brings up the question of performance, um, because that's come up. Because the people, game runs at 30, 60 yeah, uh, FPS people, of people 60 are now. really uh, people are really salty that this 30 frames per second game wasn't made at a frame wasn't remade at a frame rate that's higher than 30 frames. But I think the sticking point is that like some of the trailers had 60 frames per second, which is very weird. I have to wait. Say. So the game ran at 30 pr uh, frames per second on PlayStation One. Yeah, okay. but it's not so weird when I consider that, uh, it, like, this is a kind of an obscure fact. They're not making a big spectacle of it, but it looks like the Insane Trilogy is a timed exclusive, not a pure exclusive. So they're probably planning a PC port. And that's probably when we're going to get the 60 frames version. But I think, like, in the meantime... Just for the sake of consistency, they should keep the trailers at 30. Because when I see the trailers running at 60, and I'm wondering why that's not even the case for, like, the PS4 Well, what, what they probably did was they made the game uh, for the PC and ported it, uh, is what I'm expecting. Because that's, it's just simpler to start from the PC and go to console than the other way around. Um, because when you make a game specifically for a console and then port it to PC, all those programming specifics tend to hinder the final product quite a bit. Which I think is becoming less and less of an issue, though, because, because the they're is becoming be be Because the architecture's simpler, yeah, but they're also developing for PC first. <laughs> um. Yeah. Ultimately, the difference between a console and a high-tech gaming PC is really... The gap is closing very, very quickly between the yeah. two. Yeah, so it's not as arduous as it used to be. I, I don't think it'll ever be as bad as the last generation, where things had to be radically different for, like, the PS3 yeah. or... The 360. Anyway, yeah. uh, Rolling Stones, um, you know. Uh, eh, I don't know. This Not is my a... favorite band, they're okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, this is a level that's slightly, uh, uh, awkward to get all the boxes for, because not only is there... Gotta, a... Now you gotta wait, because yeah. the, the mass all... You see those TNTs? The TNT. One of the boxes has an Embryo token in it. If you blow up a box that has a bonus token in it... Why did you even stop that? <laughs> that's an <laughs> unnecessary risk. 
No, I, I, because there's plenty of room. I, I, I didn't, I didn't want to risk it, and I just wanted to get past that rolling stone. I knew I could do it. I'm confident in my skills, man. I'm confident in my skills. But confidence ain't the word. <laughs> it's being dumb. No, I always, I always make that jump. It's not hard. There's a lot of space off to that side. Just hang as far to the right as possible. Easy. Reckless. But not only do you I need to reckless. make sure to get all of the embryo tokens, if you were paying attention the first time I went through this level, you'll notice I only got the third one on my way through. Um, the, the, embryo, the embryo bonus stage is one challenge point, but the gem, the gem path is another. And the gem path isn't hard, but it's awkward. And one programming change they made to this, to this version of the game basically removes the only thing about that that will ever kill you. In the original, it was possible to fall off the gem into the pit before it lowered you and die that way, just because you made a semi-inaccurate semi jump. Not so in this version, because they programmed all the gem platforms in all three games to make your character, and this is true of the bonus platforms as well, and they make your character do a little skip jump to the middle of the platform when you land on them, so that uh, you avoid any awkward oops, I fell off the platform moments. It's just an automatic thing that happens. You don't need the life. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's there. It's sitting in the air. I like to get it just to prove that I did. Spin it away, get a Bye, trophy. Bye, Tana. If you spin away a life, you get a trophy. Yep. Yeah, yeah. the trophies are pretty hilarious in this Th game. There's uh, three trophies that are hidden in Crash 1 that you can get by accident and you probably will on your first time through. One is getting eaten by one of the um, Venus fly traps in the jungle levels. Not the river levels, the jungle levels. One is getting electrocuted by the electrical hazards in a level like uh, Cortex Power. And the other is spinning away a life. And that one is... I meant to do that. Yeah, that one is called I meant to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. That happens to you too. Word of advice. You can also spin away bonus tokens. So be careful about that. <laughs> Uh, and yes, you need to do the bonus tokens for uh, box boxes. completion. Boxes, okay. I mean, it didn't matter in the original game. The only ones that really mattered were the Cortex ones for the keys, which were rare to begin with, and the Tana bonus stages because they were your save points. Yeah. Thankfully, that's not the case here anymore. You, you can, can just save, save after at every level I noticed. Yeah, yeah and yeah. there's an auto save slot. Thank you for giving us multiple manual save slots for all three games, uh, Vicarious Visions. That's how you do it. I also appreciated that the save icon was an old PS1 memory card, too. That yeah. was a pretty cool touch. Yeah. As you know, I highlight that in particular because there's this designer trend, which I cannot comprehend, of giving every game one autosave slot and nothing else. Ratchet and Clank. Why? A question, though, because... The, the save icon for when they're warning you about overwriting the saves as a PS1 memory card, when this game does eventually get to the Xbox One or the PC, do you think they could are Well, for the PC, I can imagine they're making it a floppy disk, apparently, just for the callback. But what about the Xbox One? I don't um, think it's close enough to be, like, called out on that kind of thing. Like, it's... Oh, well, no, they're gonna, have, they're gonna have to get rid of it. It's, uh, it's, it's a fairly general image, but we'll see. I just kind of expect them to make some other image for it but we'll see there's also an animation for when you delete a save file it just incinerates the save file slot oh i love it when games do that kirby does that a lot of the time where the game like actually three asks you three times if you're sure you want to delete the save file and then it blows it up and well, that's yeah. awesome <laughs> i i appreciate that in ps3 ps4 era games specifically because all of the consoles now have their own like prefabs game saving screen that a lot of games use because they're too lazy to make their own save slots but like when games make their own save screen animations and stuff intentionally in spite of that it's like you know just a little bit of effort they didn't need to put it in but they did and i appreciate it i love the well i love and hate it when my ps2 memory cards are getting full and I had to delete some save files, and they would go out of their way to make separate delete f file animations for certain characters. Like, oh, I'm sad now. <laughs> and it was all the Capcom shit I noticed. <laughs> Mega Man's gonna gonna shame you so hard for deleting your file. It's like I, um, one of the like Animusha. 
the safe icon I, I, was. I, I, I'm dazzled game. though. You actually filled up a PlayStation 2 memory card. That's like I played a lot of games on the PlayStation. That's like two <laughs> fucking megabytes of pure save data. That should. It's eight megabytes. That, eight megabytes. Yeah, you're right. Two yeah. megabytes was the PlayStation One version. But like, I'm like, wow, that shouldn't happen unless you're using something intensive like RPG Maker. Ugh. Yeah, if you want to talk about systems with terrible save uh, save storage, the GameCube memory cards could hold like four games. Oh um, yeah, I know. I, I like I, I I switched to a bigger third party memory card for the GameCube and never looked back. Yeah, same here. And mine's mm-hmm. broken, so Animal not only Crossing. did I lose like half of my game save data, I can't play some games because their save data is uh, too big for me to fit on my default old GameCube memory card. So <laughs> Animal Crossing Animal Crossing came packaged with the memory card because it, the save file took up the entire card. Yeah. Yeesh. Yeah, you can't I can't play SSX anymore. I can't play a number of different games because the save file is too big to fit on my normal memory card. It's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, so at this point I got cocky. I'm like, okay, it's only about twenty one minutes. I can probably get through the high road in a couple. Ha. <sighs> Past me, you are an idiot. But yeah, the high road. On the plus side, you actually can get the gem, and because you can die, getting the gem itself is absurdly easy in the high road, because the box is, like, except maybe for one box that's off screen or in an awkward these. position. Oh yeah, it's these boxes at the beginning. And I think they made this actually slightly easier by putting the ropes there, so that you know that there's a path to follow. <laughs> Too much Dark Souls. You know, if I were to sum up the plot of Dark Souls, my summary probably would be the road to nowhere. But, um... <laughs> anyway, you might notice that I have a pity mask now. I died a lot just trying to get those boxes and then make it to the next checkpoint. <sighs> and you can tell... That I didn't make it far, because that life was still there. It was not the best start to a level. Hey, you wanted to do it in that session or whatever. Now, what makes the high road particularly annoying is that it involves a lot of turtle bouncing. And as we've touched on earlier, the turtle hitboxes are weird in this game. In conjunction with your new it, oval hitbox yeah, it, and landing on platforms, it's a recipe for disaster. Yeah, you can find yourself, like, slightly nudging after a bounce to a slightly less safe position than you want it to be in. So... By the way, I was kidding about the hitbox drinking game earlier, commenters. I hope to God you're not drinking because I care for your well-being. No, you don't. Well, hopefully they're doing it like they're watching this playthrough as it's being released, and so they're only having like two or three drinks a day, and then it's... without the audience, we are nothing. Yeah. There aren't enough liver donors in the world to uh, to uh, correct the damage that such a drinking game would would would, would inflict. Oh boy! Go for it! Fuck! Just Fuck. go for it. Wait, why does the laptop die? Okay, this is going to be a sweet jump. Woo! <laughs> Made it. <laughs> now, uh, Somehow. Someone, someone, I think it was What Culture Gaming, said that you can't do a safety bounce and then get full momentum when you jump. Actually not accurate, although it is, uh, it is something to be careful of. If you want full momentum from a bounce, if you're, like, dropping straight down at something, you have to move forward slightly before landing on the bounce. You can't... Um, move forward after bouncing up, otherwise you won't get the full length of the jump. So it's not impossible, but a fuck ton harder. It's yeah, it's 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 a lot harder because in Crash One, yeah. like the moment you pushed forward, you got full momentum. You shot forward. It's it, it made certain aspects of Crash One's precision challenges actually kind of hard, but uh, yeah. Ugh. Okay, this is an easy enough set of set of jumps. When it's when it's got two planks in a row there, that's an easy jump to make. A thing to keep out for though is like once you pass the warthog, it will stop. Yeah, yeah. Like it it'll, stops it'll and starts ass. panting like a dog for some reason, which I'm yeah. pretty sure is a unique animation that they added to this game, uh, to this remake. So they made this box right here easier to see. Yep. 
Yeah, they, they lowered it. Because everyone missed that when they were a kid. They lowered yeah. it a smidge. And, like, this level is dickish enough without missing boxes. D-pad hype! Yep. <laughs> D-pad hype! There we I go. Ropes. Wow, now those ropes are very dusty. <laughs> they are, aren't they? Maybe it's frost we're kicking up. It's very high up in the... By the way, I uh, like the little snafu on the detail here. We can still see the third island in the background. Yeah, that's throughout all three <laughs> islands. It gets closer and closer as you go. I think they might. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They might, but they in, might have gotten the idea from the Death Egg in Sonic Three. So. Well, that's not what I was talking about. I'm talking about how the first Road to Nowhere level wasn't the second island, and you could see the third island out in the distance. Yeah. The high road is in the third island. So what are we looking at in the background there? Uh, the other island. The third island is no, actually two islands the, connected by a bridge. You know. The third island has the tower in the top. That is clearly the third island in the background. Well, the depth Oops. reception is seriously off, yeah. Uh, this was me fucking up, I think. <laughs> you can still... Uh, no, no. Oh. <laughs> if you jumped on the steel crate, you can Anyway, this is the actual most efficient way to do it. Skip every other box, and then go back the way and you And then came. make your way back. Yeah. Like, these levels were all designed so that you could get all of the boxes... But they were also not designed to require you to do that. So, like, they have that same element that the Crash 2 and 3 bonus stages have, where there's a bit of a puzzle element to getting all of the boxes, but they are way harder in Crash 1. Because you weren't necessarily <laughs> supposed to get all of the boxes, it was just something that you could try to do if you wanted to. A risk versus reward kind of thing. Uh, after Crash 1, did, like, in Crash How did 2, I make did that they... bounce? Where they're getting all the boxes in Crash One still got you a gem though, right? So yes. Did yeah. they just did the gems do anything, or were they just a completion kind of thing? They unlocked. They needed. They, needed, they were needed for additional routes for com further completion, and so I'll get the best ending. I thought you only needed the color gems to get the best ending. No, no, no. You need no. all the clear. You gems. need the color gems to get all the clear gems, and you need all the clear gems to get the best ending. Okay. The color gems aren't. Uh, are, are significant only in that they unlock colored gem paths. The clear gems are the actual platforms you jump across to reach Tana in the Great Hall. Um, okay. And in Crash 2 and 3, you just needed all the gems. They were all the MacGuffins, so... Yeah, and that, it's... In, in Crash 2 and 3, I know that they're, like, the other power source aside from the crystals, but I didn't know what they were for in Crash 1, mm -hmm. specifically. Anyway, who's ready for another kooky Japanese Crash Bandicoot commercial, hmm? Huh? Oh no! どこ行ったのかな暮らしを。暮らしじゃねえか。やってんだろ。一緒にドライブ行きませんか。みんな車持ってないじゃん。あなた誰？みんな。みんな。みんな。みんなで楽しくレーシング。暮らしバンディクレ